Oh. <sighs> What's up, everyone? Punchy back with Higurashi when they cry. Chapter three. Tigurashi. Uh, last time we ugh, ended in really tense time, where lots of yelling. Uh, Punchy being really stupid. Rena putting in his place. You know the usual. Uh, but Rena finally calmed down. So. The sound of the chair as Rena sat back down after having stood up finally allowed everyone present to take a breath. Rena had shown me just how much I'd hurt Mion. Rena's scary. After a few moments, we could try and cut into the frozen air. Yeah, I'm sorry, Rika chan. Nichan, I'm sorry to you too. I don't have to apologize to you, do I, Punchy Kun? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being so unreasonable. Were you saying all that to me before? You said it while glaring at Nichan, so I totally thought you were talking to her. Rena had such strength that you wouldn't have imagined it normally. All I did was spout terrible things as a wave of violent fury passed over me. I couldn't contend with her. Mian, uh, I'm sorry. I lost my cool. Come to think of it, I didn't understand what had gotten me that riled up. I thought of myself as Satoko's nini, so I only had good intentions. That I'd think about it a little harder than everyone else, and yet... Um... It's okay. You were worrying with everyone, everything you had, but all I was saying was that nothing would work. So I'm sorry. I... did something wrong, too. Mian rubbed away the tears at the corners of her eyes with her fists and apologized as well. We bowed our heads to each other and looked down without glancing at the other. Someone, I don't know who, heaved a sigh. Satoko being tormented had been known about since last year. How had the tragedy back then saved Satoko? How had they brought it to an end? Right. In the end, nobody could do anything. All they could do was bear it patiently and wait for those agonizing days to end. That's right. The one who brought an end to those terrible days was some crazy drug addict nobody knew. On the night of Watanagashi last year, their mean ants had been beaten to death. But it hadn't been done to save Satoko or Satoshi. Right. It really was just a coincidence. Satoko's friends, who needed to do something for her most of all, could do nothing. The incident may have been a tragic one, but from Satoko's viewpoint, it was nothing less than a miracle. Yes, a miracle. A miracle one could only wait for. Is waiting all... all we can do? Not for evidence of abuse, not for something that minor. Huh? Wait, for what? A miracle. No one made fun of me for using such a crazy word. We couldn't come up with any such solutions, so it was the only thing we could do. We're powerless. That one word Mian dropped was the finishing blow. It was hot. My body was sticky with sweat. The worst month, June. Oh, man, I mean, luckily at the end of it was just some apologies and... I mean, I don't blame them. Emotions running high. It was Something was bound to happen between the group of friends, but that's the first time we've, you know, seen them argue and no death had occurred afterwards. I walked forward quite a ways. 
then turned right where the rice fields ended. I'd never come here before, so I had no idea where to go. I got lost several times, so I may have taken quite a long way around. Maybe I should have gone back home and gotten my bike first. It would have made everyone else worry if I'd asked them. So I asked one of our other classmates where Shitoko's actual house was. The house was originally her family's, apparently, not their uncle and his wife's. Their house had been bigger, so they'd taken it for themselves. Right here, several houses all in the line. Over there? I was visiting Satoko's house, but didn't particularly intend to meet her there. I didn't mean to spy on the enemy, her mean uncle, either. Maybe I just want to be a little closer to her as her nini. Pretty words, but I didn't know if they were true. If what Tomitaku and others told me was right, it'd be this house? I recognized it, well when I recognized it, my feet grew heavy. What did I come here for? My motive was for coming here was absurd. When Mina said it said at the end that we were powerless, it made me sort of frustrated. I just want to do something, anything other than waste the days away praying for a miracle. That's what made me come here. But that was all. Even if I, I were to witness her uncle actually tormenting Satoko, what could I do? Would I act like a comic book hero, punch the guy in the face, and take Satoko away from me? Well, that is our name. And then live together somewhere far away? That was ridiculous. I'm powerless. The cicada's voices raised in chorus, sounded like they were scoffing at me. As though they were saying that if I couldn't do anything and wouldn't do anything, then I should go back home. I heard a car approaching, so I got out of its way. But the car stopped right behind me, its horn hawking softly, uh, shortly, once. Oh, gosh. Oh, please don't be the cop. Annoyed. Hadn't I gotten out of their way? I looked behind me, and a familiar face was looking out of the driver's seat window. Oh, thank God. Coach. Hello, Mary Barasan. How unexpected to meet you all the way out here. Do you live nearby? Me being here wasn't normal. Just as I considered somehow giving him the slip, I noticed Satoko sitting in the passenger seat. S Satoko? Satoko got out of the car and began unloading a lot of groceries from the trunk. I happened to run into Coach on my way back from shopping. He said he'd bring me home, so I accepted his offer. She wouldn't have been able to carry all those groceries on her bike. As Coach spoke, he pulled Satoko's bike out from the back seat where they'd put it. The grocery bags were big, and there were four of them. They all seemed to be packed full and very heavy. Those bags... Seven smart? Hey, isn't that a little far to go on by, by bicycle? I looked at the bags and saw that they were filled to the brim with sake bottles, snacks that you'd eat with sake, and a box of cigarettes. How did she buy that? I, that doesn't seem right. Their weight was one thing, but their contents were nothing less than luxury items. I made it thanks to Coach. He helped me out. It was a little diff. It was a little difficult going up those hills. Stoka gave Coach a smile filled, filled with gratitude, but it was incredibly awkward and even heartrending. Satoko, those groceries aren't for dinner tonight, are they? Of course not. I do not drink sake and I hate snacks. Of course I don't smoke either. He... He made Satoko go to a distant store by herself on her bike. So she could buy dumb shit like this? What was the uncle doing right now anyway? He must have been working up a good sweat at this very moment, 
If you need to send Satoko out by yourself, right? If not, then how much? How much had Satoko suffered for no reason? If I'd intended to voice my feelings... But... They made it... They may have made it to my face. I mean, Opunji is really bad with keeping his thoughts, you know... To himself. Coach might have noticed because he clapped me on the shoulder. Just then, one of the house windows clattered open in the face of a vulgar man. The very sight of which made me immediately avert my eyes, emerge from within it. There were no self-introductions necessary. My gut told me that this was the uncle in question. The first thing out of his mouth should have been words of gratitude for Satoko. Satoko! You left the heat up for the sake and when you left you half-wit! Uh, I'm sorry. But you, you told me to go right away. You idiot! All that brewing I did for nothing! Idiot! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Stoker miserably apologized over and over, bowing again and again. She could be perfectly described as a small animal. I had no idea what was happening. Stoker finished shopping for all this heavy stuff that wasn't even for dinner. She only managed to come back because she ran to coach and he drove her home. If she hadn't been found by him, she'd surely still be by herself, panting and moaning, pedaling her bicycle up that steep hill. It was with those words, those horrible sleazy words, that he said to Satoko? In what country's dictionary did it tell him to say such things to a young girl who just finished shopping? My anger, of course, wouldn't reach him. The younger displayed no interest in me, instead shouting at Coach. Oh, if it isn't Dr. Irie. Hello, hello. Why don't you come on inside too? We're in the last round, so you can get in right away. A hundred yen per thousand points, and anything goes. No. I'll pass. Thank you. I just ran to Sotoko-chan and gave her a lift is all. I'll be leaving now. Ah, uh, nah. Come play around. You got lots of money, yeah? <laughs> I didn't even understand what her uncle and coach were talking about. But I knew one thing for sure. None of what he just said had been to thank Sotoko in any way. Sotoko, could you bring us the damn snacks? And start getting these bi those beers chilled too. Go and get us some cold ones from the fridge. Techa, you're so harsh on her. She looks so sad. You should take better care of her. This is how I gotta treat her. She's been like this since she was with my bro. Spoil her and she ain't gonna listen to a damn thing you say. Shit. I know weirdly I gave him like a, I don't know, kind of like a southern twang, but... Even though he's in Japan, I'm pretty sure the accents are not the same, but... Whatever, it's your draw, Tae-chan. Tsubaki-san declared, Richi too. Sorry, sorry. What? You're Richi again, Tsubaki? It looked like it wasn't just her uncle. Some of his friends were over. Hey, wait. What was he... No. What were they doing? Flinging rude words left and right. Makes it so go shopping for your beer? What were they doing? Well, if he's an insect, he's gonna have some loser friends too. My uncle's friends came from town, and they're playing mahjong. He told me to prepare dinner for them as well. What? What? The hell? Mahjong? He called his friends over for mahjong? They were too busy playing, so they sent Satoko to buy them a crap load of booze from a faraway store? And the first thing he said to her was how she left the gas on? What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? What does that guy think he's doing? Who could get lost in some dumb game or mahjong and send Satoko to buy all this stuff? Even though Coach was listening, he pretended he wasn't. There was a line of heavy looking shopping bags lined up on the ground next to the trunk. Hey, Barasan, you help, you help too, please. You're a boy. You get to carry, you get to carry this heavy one. Coach, 
You're gonna let this slide? This is completely... Coach pretended he hadn't heard the, that violent outburst either. When I thought about it later, his reaction might have been the best thing he could do in that situation. I'll carry two of them myself. Come on, help us carry them, please. The bags were packed to the brim with bottles of sake and bar snacks. They were so heavy. And so filthy. So unfair. They weren't just heavy in terms of weight. They made me feel mortified. Nothing could have been heavier than that. Punchy-san, there's no need to push yourself. I'll carry it. Satoko mistook my biting back the humiliation as grimacing under their weight and offered to help. Stupid. Don't underestimate me. Satoko had never looked down on physical strength, down on my physical strength in the slightest. <sighs> Coach, I'm sorry for you too. It must be heavy. No, not at all. Answered Coach, smiling vaguely. Coolly. But I, and I alone, knew. Coach was an adult, so he just knew how to keep his feelings from showing. There was even more anger than I was feeling, burning deep in his eyes. Well, <laughs> it is heavy. Ugh. Shit. Shit. This wasn't very far from the doorstep of Satoko's house, but the bag squeezed my palms and started leaning, leaving red marks. God. Fury welled up in me, and the back of my throat stung. But even if it all came crush gushing out, it wouldn't solve anything. If anything, Punchy, it would probably make things worse. So, just tightly gritting my teeth was as much as I could do. Really, thank you so much, both of you. You really helped me here. After we carried them back to the door, Soka said that was enough. Occasionally, we'd hear the repulsive laughing of her uncle and his friends from within, and my insides would seethe. I knew they weren't ridiculing us, and that was why it made me so mad. They made Soka shop for all this heavy, selfish stuff that ignored her and laughed amongst themselves as they pleased. It was deeply aggravating. Of course, Coach had to have felt the same way. But if he accidentally let his feelings slip onto his face, he'd only cause Satoko more, more worry. He knew all of that and spoke coolly, as if to say he didn't care. Not at all. I'm happy it could be a bit of help for you. If there's anything else I can help with, please tell me. Yes. I really am happy, am happy you feel that way. That he feels that way. Those words were sad. Satoko herself was sad and resigned that we could only help her so much. But she was right. No matter how much culture I wanted to help Satoko, this was as much as we could do. I felt absolutely ashamed not having the power to help her any more than this. Burning, broiling emotions were bubbling up within me and rising into my throat. Trebling all over, I almost started to cry from my fury. Me too. If there's anything I could do, I'll help you whenever you need. So um, hang in there. I wanted to at least give her those trite words, saying that I'd help her whenever she wanted. Yes, thank you very much. I'm happy, just that. You came all the way here when you didn't need to. Satoko seemed to have guessed what I was doing in a place like this, when my house was in the opposite direction from school. Alright, you should get going. They're drunk right now, so there's no telling what they'll get mad at you for. She felt guilty getting us involved after we'd helped her. We'd helped her. Because she wanted to be the only one to suffer this misfortune. That's how it looked, and it hurt. I handed my supermarket bag over to Satoko. And then, I noticed the back of Satoko's hand. There was something that looked like a bruise. Hey, Satoko, what's... What the heck is that bruise? 
I knew as much as anyone else how transparent that sounded. I didn't need to hear it from Satoko to know how this bruise came to be. I just slipped on the stairs and hid it a little. Please, pay it no mind. Y you're lying. Coach nudged me in the back, and then he put his index finger to his mouth to chide me for being so loud. Really, thank you so much. Until tomorrow. I hope we can see each other at school. Th that's not what I'm talking about. Ash, how you got that bruise on your hand? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. The evening glow finally got to a point where I could see the other concealed oval shaped bruises and traces, traces of swelling on her neck and her legs and other places too. I fell down the stairs. Ho ho ho. At the very moment my violent rampage emotions were about to burst their way out of my throat, I found my mouth being tightly clamped down on. Coach was pressing down my mouth from behind, wrapping me around tightly with his hands. Because of that, I couldn't say anything. I could only groan, which I did. That was all I could do. I needed to expel all the magma sitting, sitting deep within me. Because otherwise, I'd truly explode into a million pieces that very moment. So I groaned. I groaned. From my mouth. From my whole body. While heat fell in drops from my eyes. I groaned and groaned. And I groaned to the point of exhaustion. <laughs> I wrung absolutely everything out, my, out of myself. Even having lost my voice, I was still wriggling it all out. I understand how you feel. I really do, Mary Barasan. Please, please just endure it for now. Please, I'm asking you, Mary Barasan. Endure it for now? And then what, huh? What would happen to her? To Satoko? Her body and mind were wounded, and she was being made to suffer like this? Can you not even... You let me howl in vain at it? Is that it, coach? Are we this powerless? So powerless that we can't even fucking scream from the bottom of our hearts? Oh man. Like, we've dealt with cursed girls, like, sending us red bean, very scary red bean buns, um, with Demon Neon, and. Shion being insane. This is this is rough, really. The voices of the Higurashi made me calm down. I didn't know how long it had been. Satoko abruptly gave a slight bow. Thank you very much, Panchi-san. Satoko. You looked a lot like my real Nini just now. My real Nini may not be here anymore, but I have another Nini named Punchy-san. Yeah, you got it. I'm your Nini, and when you're in pain, I'll help you no matter what. Your Nini will rescue you for sure. Satoshi Hoji, you fucking idiot. If not now, then when? Satoko. She's never been in more pain in her life. If her Nini doesn't save her now, then, we'll, then we'll, when will he? Why did you run away? Why did you abandon her? Why did you leave Satoko behind? You don't have any right to call yourself Satoko's Nini- Ah, oh, punchy. Man, he's in, a, he's in a really bad spot now. I can't even- I want to chastise him, but I can't. I- I won't run away. Huh? I definitely won't run away. I won't run away and abandon you. It's Toshi did. No way. I will not abandon you. Uh-oh. Tears slip. Tears trickling down from Stoko's eyes. And then she narrowed her eyes into a smile. Goodbye, Nini. Satoko took her right hand and awkwardly waved to me. 
I'll be alright. My... My Nini now helped me. Helped me so much. So I'll be okay. I'll do my best until tomorrow. I'll be okay. So, for today, this is... Goodbye. There was no way that I could say, Bye, see you tomorrow. And then, from inside the house came a throaty, disgusting voice. Sadoko! Could you bring us the snacks already? Okay, Nini. Get going already. I'll be fine now. Hurry. Let's go, Mirabara san. Staying any longer than this would be a bother to Satoko chan. Coach, Nini's house is a little far away. I'm sorry to ask you this, but could you take him home? Yes, I'll do that. Coach grabbed me by my collar, and with strength I couldn't have imagined him having, started dragging me away. And I, unable to oppose him, started getting farther away from Satoko. She waved her hand to us, expression still dark, and disappeared through the back door. Oh, oh, jeez. This one's really rough. This one, oh, God, like, the death of, like, um, Tomitake and Takano-san, um, uh, like, the threats from Rena before when she was in curse form, those are all, like, frightening, and, I mean, it's like, the deaths were just horrible, but this is just a, a whole different beast. Um, well, thanks for joining today, guys. Uh, I don't know if I could say, <laughs> hope you liked it, but, well, please like and subscribe for more, and, uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.